I want to talk about the OnePlus 10 Pro. Yeah, this is a name you haven't heard in quite a long while. Everything's always Samsung and Apple and, and everything else. Not LG because they're gone. But yes, this phone, it's been out almost a year, kind of. I mean, it was announced in China, I believe, in December of last year. It was the first phone mainstream one, I believe, that had the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. That's what it's got. And I really like to call this phone not the OnePlus 10 Pro, but the OnePlus 9 Pro Part 2. Uh, very little has actually changed from the OnePlus 9 Pro, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because the 9 Pro I thought was a fantastic phone. I kind of liked it better in a lot of ways than the S21 Ultra. However, the reason this is so relevant, like a lot of people are not normally buying OnePlus phones almost a year later. The OnePlus 10T came out, kind of went in a different direction. We're waiting on the inevitable reality of the OnePlus 11 Pro or whatever it's going to be. This one. It has been on sale as low as like $499 here the last couple of days. So I thought, I just shared a link in my YouTube community tab. And if you don't subscribe, you should. And if you subscribe and you don't check out the community tab, you also should. I post a lot of stuff there frequently, not just nonsense, which of course I'm known for that. But a lot of times when I find some good deals. So this one actually, the OnePlus 10 Pro, the 8 gigabyte model, 128 They've had as low as like $325 or something like that. Open box on Best Buy. But I mean, even in my area, they had one I found for like $350. This phone is an insane steal of a deal. If you can get it for $350, $329, $400, even $499. I mean, I've had a lot of people asking me the last couple of days, hey, should I get the Pixel 7 at $499 or Best Buy and some other places have been selling the OnePlus 10 Pro brand new for 550. This is a great phone for $550. 5,000 milliamp battery. You got the quad setup on the back. You got a 48 megapixel primary, 50 megapixel ultra wide, 8 megapixel telephoto, 8K video. I mean, it's got an HDR 10 plus screen. It's AMOLED, all those great things. 1300 nits peak brightness, 1440p, quad HD plus resolution. Nice form factor on it. Uh, the only thing I'm not crazy about is they only do 1080p for video on the front, which it's crazy to me because they got 8K video on the back and they tout all these great video things, video improvements, camera improvements, all that stuff. It's got the Hasselblad cooperation for the color science. There's a lot of great things here. I mean, you could sit here and just rattle off on this phone. They even have the 12 gigabyte 256 model, 8 gigabyte 128 model. It's got the legendary mute switch over on the side. I think it's funny because it looks like a Kenmore <laughs> stove on the back here. But there's a lot of great things about it. I really enjoyed this phone. I thought they did a great job with it. I felt like they didn't really push that Hasselblad thing enough when it came to the cameras. I felt like the 9 Pro camera was more impressive. But this is basically just a 9 Pro camera all over again with some slight color science tweaks and a few other things. Maybe a little bit better low light just because of the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1, machine learning, AI, computational photography stuff, Oxygen OS. And here's the other thing. They get three years of operating system updates, four years of security patches, which I think is fine. As long as you're getting like at least three years of operating system updates, I'm pretty cool with that. Especially if you're talking about getting this phone for $350, $400, $500. Bucks. I mean, that, that's a no-brainer. This is a true flagship phone. The new one's not even out yet. This is the best phone they make. And if you're considering the 10T, it's kind of dumbed down in the camera department, even though it does have the 8 Plus Generation 1. It's got some really cool stuff with the heat dissipation and all that great stuff. Like If you're going for a straight-up best gaming phone you can get and save a ton of money, OnePlus 10T is where it's at. But you're never going to go wrong with the OnePlus Pro device. So... The, they had a little bit of issues with Android 12, just like everybody else in the get-go. There was also some throttling stuff. The Snapdragon 8 Generation 1 is a very, very powerful chipset. Not so great in the heat department. And, of course, OnePlus and Samsung also kind of got hemmed up, caught with their finger in the cookie jar, trying to do some throttling stuff, like with the gaming software and things like that. So, yeah, I like this phone. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. And it's really hard. Like, I, I talk about this all the time. It's really hard not to have a good phone nowadays because years ago, the mid-tier phones were not that great and the budget series phones were horrible. And now the mid-tier phones run like the flagship phones from a couple of years ago. The budget phones are pretty darn good. Some of them even get updates. I mean, shoot, you can get the Pixel 6a for $299 right now. And we call that a budget phone, but it's got the last generation legendary Pixel camera and it's also got the Tensor chip in it. So it's got a lot of stuff going on. Great phone. But this one right here, 
OnePlus still has like a little bit of a soft spot in my heart because I think they've always made kind of good products. They just lost their way. They had problems with trying with the whole hydrogen, oxygen OS stuff, and then they got bought back in or re-brought in under the Oppo or Oppo umbrella. So they are part of the BBK family. That's why the phones always kind of look the same. But I think that they kind of took a step back in the public eye over the last year or so. They really tried to push the envelope of the true flagship Samsung competitor, all that jazz, which... I mean, I don't blame them. They're making good stuff, right? And the 8T, 8 Pro, fantastic phones. The 7 Pro, everybody loved the 7 Pro. It wasn't until they got to the 9 series and they kind of fell flat on their face. So, yeah, I think they did a good job. Uh, don't worry about the jerry-rig everything with the video where he, like, breaks it in half. Look, you're not going to do that. And I talked about this in a previous video I made when it first came out. Nobody's sitting around trying to German suplex with their thumbs their phone and you got to be a pretty strong person to do that to begin with. I mean, I might could do it. I'm not going to do that to my phone. Put a case on it. Use a screen protector. You're going to be good to go. It's also got good sound, good stereo sound, facial recognition, fast charging. And it comes with a charger in the box. The North American model has a 65-watt charger in the box, which gets you recharged way faster than pretty, pretty much anything else it competes with. Looking at you know 45 watts with the S22 Ultra, the Z Fold 4, Z Flip 4, 25 watts. Uh, the Motorola phone, it does squeak out pretty close to that, but it comes with a 30-watt charger in the box. The Pixel phone, 30 watts max, which it doesn't charge at that. So charging is still kind of something we're a little behind on here in the U.S., but 65 watts, charger in the box, comes with the cool red cable that they're well known for, and they've got some pretty decent OEM accessories. I really like this case. I can't, I don't know the name of it, but it's, it's one of the factory cases that you can get with OnePlus. Of course, you can buy all the regular ones. Caseology makes good ones. Spigen makes good ones. You can get some decent uh, screen protectors out there that don't cost a lot of money. Overall, I think that it's a good package. The only thing that I'm really hesitant about is it just kind of irks me. It has a 32 megapixel selfie camera, but it's limited to 1080p at 30 frames per second video. And all of the BBK, Oppo phones, all the ones of the same family, they're like that. I got one the other day and it's like, here, here's this Xiaomi phone, 200 megapixel camera. And on the front facing selfie camera, you're still getting like 1080p video. Like, I don't know why they do that. It's so reverse because so much emphasis, I think, should be placed on the selfie camera now. That's where it's at for all the stuff that everyone's loving to do nowadays. Your TikTok videos, Instagram reels, or YouTube shorts. I mean, so many different things, right? So you want good front-facing selfie camera video. So the video on the back side, it is improved. I think that the video is okay on here, but here's the bottom line. Flagship performance across the board. I mean, you are really nitpicking here, right? When you look at the camera and you go, oh, well, the color's on here. I like this better than the other one or the shutter speed or look. Top-notch cameras, second generation of using the cameras. It's got the Hasselblad stuff, the cooperative, the color science. It does bring some special stuff to the table. Is it the best in the world? No, it's not. But we're not talking about buying this phone at $900 anymore. We're looking at a holiday special window of three to 500 bucks. Not much really beats that out there. Now, I've talked about a couple of phones this last few weeks. Of course, the Motorola Edge Plus 2022. I got that one for $599. They've had it as low as $499, $498. That's a heck of a deal. This is better than that. You talk about the Pixel 7. I think this is overall a more complete package than the Pixel 7. If I were to choose between both of them, it would be really hard because I like the complete package. I'm like a 7 Pro person. If you give me the opportunity to go a 7 Pro or a OnePlus 10 Pro, I'm going 7 Pro all day. But if you say, look, $500, bucks, 400 bucks. You know, are you going to get the OnePlus 10 Pro or the Pixel 7? I would probably lean towards the OnePlus 10 Pro. As much as I love the Pixel phones, I like the more complete package, the beautiful screen that it's got, the 120 hertz refresh rate, Quad HD+, full camera setup, not just the two. I mean, there's some give and take, but this right here, beautiful phone. And let me take the case off real quick. I've been sitting here with the case on the whole time. It's, it's such a beautiful phone. And it's got this matte texture on the back of it. it. It really is. It's a gorgeous phone. I mean, look at it. Ignore the Kenmore oven plates here, but it's it's a gorgeous phone. So I just wanted to talk about this. It's been about a year, and 
there are people that are interested in it. I've been getting a lot of comments, and right now is definitely the time to strike. If you want to get one, I'll have some links in the description, affiliate links. If you want to buy them on those, that's great. It helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you any extra, but if not, of course, you can search it up. Go to Best Buy. Go to OnePlus. Go to SlickDeals.net. There's so many different places that there have been a lot of sales on this thing right now. And again, the big one, Best Buy, go to the link, and then look at the open box, because a lot of these... I, I dropped a link in my community tab just a few hours ago. Well, pff, last night now, right? But it was as low as like 320 something dollars open box. And that's just insane. Like utterly insane. Insane in the membrane. So that's it. I'm going to shut up now on this one. But if you have any questions or comments, please go to the comment section. I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, if you found this helpful, if you like this stuff, then please hit the like and the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.